In this screencast, we're going to talk about limiting reactants or limiting reagents, um, as well as theoretical yield and percent yield. So let's talk about limiting reagents. And sometimes you'll hear limiting reagent, and sometimes you'll hear limiting reactant. And this is a substance that is completely consumed in the chemical reaction. Um, this determines the amount of product that can be formed during the reaction. So the, the, the amount that can be formed during the reaction is called the theoretical yield or the max amount, okay? So I want us to look at um, this analogy, okay? Let's say that you are tasked with making hot dogs and you have five hot dogs here and you have one, two, three, four buns. And so we're gonna make uh, hot dog sandwiches for lack of a better term. I know there's some controversy about whether hot dogs are actually sandwiches, but we're gonna ignore that for the moment. And so because you have only four buns, you can only make four hot dog sandwiches. And you have one hot dog left over. In this analogy, the limiting reactant, which I'm gonna abbreviate as LR, is the bun. You can't make any more hot dog sandwiches than the buns that you have. This is a theoretical yield, right? And then this hot dog that's left over, anything that's left over, that a lot of times is called the excess reagent, okay? So this, let's look at this, but now use chemicals. Here are hydrogen and oxygen, and they react to form water. And we are gonna look at some models here of this. And uh, the oxygen here is in red, the hydrogen is in white. And when we look at this, we're trying to identify what runs out first. And so you can see that over here, all of the hydrogen has reacted and there's excess oxygen left. So the hydrogen runs out first. So it's the limiting reactant. Oxygen is the excess reagent because it's left over. So let's do an example to figure out how we can calculate, um, well, first identify the limiting reactant and then calculate the theoretical yield. So here's a limiting reactant example. And this comes out and says, what's the limiting reactant when 20 grams of SO3 reacts with 10 grams of water. How much sulfuric acid will be produced? When you do this, you need to do stoichiometry for each reactant that you're given. So we have two reactants, we have SO3 and we have H2O. And so we need to do the stoichiometry for these. And the one that produces the least amount of sulfuric acid is the one that's a limiting reagent. But you have to do both of them, you can't just do one. So let's start out with SO3. We have 20 grams of SO3. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line so that we can keep ourselves straight. Then we're gonna use the molar mass to go from grams to moles. We have one mole of SO3 per 80.06 grams of SO3. 
Okay, and so we can see that our grams of SO3 here cancel. Now we're gonna use the mole ratio. We come up here and we say, okay, I've got one mole of SO3 to one mole of H2SO4. So I say one mole of SO3 to one mole of H2SO4. When you do this, your moles of SO3 cancel, and now we've got moles of H2SO4, but we need to get to grams, because we're wanting to know how much will be produced. So we come over here and we say, look, 98.079 grams of H2SO4 mole of H2SO4 as the molecular weight. Now, we're gonna double check to make sure all our units cancel, um, which as we do this, they do. And now we're gonna pick up our calculator. And we're gonna take 20, divide by 80.06. Um, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so we could multiply it by one, but you could also just skip that step. And then multiply it by 98.079. When you do this, you get 24.5 grams of H2SO4. Now, we don't know if this is a limiting reactant or not because we have to compare it to how much is produced with 10 grams of water. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do, okay, look, we got 10 grams of water and do the exact same thing, but using different values. So we're gonna use the molar mass of water it's 18.01528 grams of water per one mole of water. And then we look and we've, now we're comparing water to H2SO4. So we're gonna say, okay, look, I know there's one mole of water to one mole of sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. And now we know there's 98.079 grams of H2SO4 to one mole of H2SO4. All right, so we're gonna go through and calculate this. We're gonna take 10 grams and divide by 18. Then we are gonna multiply by 98.079. And when we do this, we get 54.4 grams of H2SO4. The limiting reagent is the one that makes the least amount. So SO3 here is the limiting reagent. And this is the theoretical yield. Okay, that's the least that we can make. Um, that, sorry. That's the, when you look at these two, it's the less amount, and that tells us it's the, theor the limiting reagent, and then that's the theoretical yield. So let's look at kind of how some of these problems can be tricky. Not every problem starts out and says, I'm a limiting reactant problem. You have to identify it's a limiting reactant sometimes, um, and so what a lot of times it'll say is, these two things react, how much can be produced? And it won't ask you what the limiting reactant necessarily is, it just you have to understand that you need to find it. So I want you to be aware of that. Let's do another one, all right? This is a tricky one, right? If 10 grams of methane is burned in 20 grams of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water, how much carbon dioxide is produced? If I didn't have limiting reactant or limiting reagent as the title here, you might not pick up on that this is a limiting reagent. The context clue is if you have two or more reactants, then it is a sneaky limiting reagent problem, okay? And so to figure out how much carbon dioxide is produced, we have to do two stoichiometry problems because we have two amounts of reactant. Now we're gonna need the balanced equation here. We have balanced this before in another screencast, so I'm just gonna write it here for us. Um, I actually thought it was already on the slide, but it apparently disappeared in some conversions. So there we are. Okay, so there's our balanced equation. So we are gonna start off with methane. And we've got 
10 grams of methane. And we are just gonna do a normal stoichiometry problem. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna say, great, I have one mole of methane. We're gonna use the molecular weight for 16 grams of methane. And you can, of course, draw a map if you want. Um, I, I'm not doing that, but you are more than welcome to. This is the mole ratio. So we're gonna go look for CO2 because that's what it's asked for. And it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio. We're up there looking at the, uh, the balanced equation. And then now we need the molar mass there. All right, now I'm gonna go back and double check that everything cancels. So my grams of CH4 cancel there. My moles of CH4 cancel there. My moles of CO2 cancel there, and I'm left with grams of CO2. So I'm gonna do this calculation, and I get 27.5 grams of CO2. So that's my first reagent. And now I've gotta go and do the same or similar, not the exact same, but similar calculations with my second reagent. All right, so we're gonna use our molar mass. for one mole of O2. Now we're gonna look at our uh, mole ratios and we're gonna see that the coefficient in front of the oxygen is two. So it's two moles of O2 per one mole of CO2. And then we're gonna do the molar mass. So my hope is that you're picking up on a pattern here, right? And the pattern is molar mass, mole ratio, and then molar mass again, right? Molar mass, mole ratio, molar mass. So we, we do our calculations and we get 13.75, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and round this to three significant figures because that's what we have in the problem, grams. We look at this and we identify the one that makes the least. 13.8 makes the least. Sorry, 13.8 is the least. And so o, because O2 makes 13.8, which is the least amount, O2 is the limiting reagent. That means the theoretical yield is 13.8. Now, just because Theoretically, we should make 13.8. Doesn't always mean in the lab that we do make 13.8. Sometimes we lose stuff in the lab. And what do I mean by that? Well, you're gonna filter it and you're gonna lose some. Um, uh, some it's gas, some of it uh, bubbles away, right? Um, or maybe the reaction doesn't go to 100% completion. So a really helpful calculation in the lab is percent yield. Um, percent yield, is just um, the actual yield over the theoretical yield. So when we talk about percent yield, that is the actual yield, what you actually get, and you measure this in, a, uh, in the lab, over the theoretical yield. So let's talk theoretical yield for a moment. The theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product possible in a chemical reaction, okay? And then the actual yield is the measured amount of product in the laboratory. This must be, it is given to you, it must be given to you in a problem. Right, or you measure it in the lab. 
So let's look at an example problem where you would have to figure out the percent yield. Aluminum burns in bromine liquids, producing aluminum bromide. In one experiment, six grams of aluminum reacted with an excess of bromine to yield 50.3 grams of aluminum bromide. Calculate the theoretical and percent yield. All right, there's a lot to unpack here. The first step is to write the chemical equation. We have, and so we have to look, look at the first sentence to write it, aluminum. We know aluminum all by itself is a metal and that burns in bromine liquid. And so if it's bromine liquid, bromine is diatomic, it's gonna be Br2 and that's gonna be a liquid and it's gonna produce aluminum bromide. Now, when we look up here to figure out the aluminum bromide, we look at our periodic table, we see it's plus three. We look at bromide, we see it's a minus. We crisscross applesauce that guy down and now we have aluminum bromide as a solid. So when we do, when we look at this, right, we can um, go back and now we need to balance the equation here. Um, to be able to do this, because one bromine is two and one is three, um, the one of the easy ways to do this is to know that six is what they're gonna have in common. So you can put a two here and a three here, and then a two there. Or you can balance it by listing everything up. It's completely up to you. So that's our first step, whew, done. Now, let's go over here and look at the next sentence. In one experiment, six grams of aluminum reacted with excess bromine. That tells us that that six grams of aluminum that is our limiting reagent because if you have excess, you've got tons of bromine left over. That's your excess reagent. So that's a limiting reagent. That's what we're going to do stoichiometry with to yield 50.3 grams of aluminum bromide. Look, they're saying in the lab, that's how much you got. That then is our actual yield. Okay, so we've identified that as our actual yield. So let's look at some stoichiometry to figure out our theoretical yield. So to figure out our theoretical yield, we do stoichiometry with the limiting reactant. So we have six grams of aluminum. And we need to figure out how many grams of aluminum bromide we make. So we come here and we say the molecular weight for aluminum, we look at our periodic table, is 26.98 grams of aluminum per one mole of aluminum. Then we look at our balanced chemical equation and we look at those coefficients and we say, look, there's two moles of aluminum for every two moles of aluminum bromide. And so we can see the grams of aluminum cancel. You can see the moles of aluminum cancel here. And then we can come here and we can say our molar mass of aluminum bromide is 266.69 grams of aluminum bromide, right? And that's one mole of aluminum bromide. And we do that math, we get 59.3 and it's 0 0.8. Um, when we look at this, there are two significant figures. So our final answer will have to be in two significant figures, but I'm gonna keep it kind of at 59.3 right now. You wanna keep all kind of, you wanna keep um, a lot of your significant figures until, oh, I do not like that, until, and round at the end. Okay, so we've got 59.3 grams. You know what? I'm gonna change this just so our significant figures make sense. There, now we have three. All right, let's see the percent yield. Percent yield equals the actual, what you actually got in the lab, over the theoretical, which we calculate from the limiting reagent, times 100. So we're gonna take 50.3 grams. We're gonna divide it by 59.3 grams. And we're gonna multiply that by 100. When we do that, we get 84.8%, and that is our percent yield. Now, 
when you think about this, your percent yield needs to be less than 100. It is not going to be over 100 um, because you cannot create matter, okay? If it is over 100 in the lab, you've probably done something wrong. Um, and it's, it, it, it might just be a mistake that's very easy to fix. Your product may need to dry more. Maybe it's wet. It's got little molecules of water in there that you're, measure, that you're uh, looking at. Maybe when you filtered it, you forgot to take out the weight of the filter paper. Um, so it's a really good double check to always ask yourself, does this result make sense in the rational world? And for your percent yield, it should be less than 100 um, for this to make sense.